<sighs> Welcome back, guys. Velvet, aren't we going after him? This is his fight. It has nothing to do with me. But Shigure said he'd be waiting at the port. He may be a nutball, but I don't think he's fool enough to let us slip past. Exactly. And as a swordsman, he's even more skilled than Artorius, and that's saying something. We're mice with our tails pinned, and the cat's licking his lips. At the very least, Korogane seems to have some kind of plan. Fine. We'll hear what he has to say. What was that fat cat creature with Shigure? You mean Morgrim? She's a Moloch. She just looks different. And? And what? She has all the abilities of a Moloch. I'm not trying to keep anything from you. All I know is her name and that she's a Moloch. Huh. Lord Shigure is an exorcist legate, but he's also a warrior who can match exorcists or demons even without the use of Moloch arts. Since no one has ever seen Shigure use an art, Morgrim is considered one of the Seven Wonders of the Abbey. The Seven Wonders of the Abbey! No one knows Morgrim's capabilities, or even the details of Shigure's pact with her. No one! Except me, that is! Huh? This is all highly classified, but Morgrim is incredibly lazy. The price she demanded of Shigure for making a pact with her was... grooming and defleeing! Anything else? Oh, and on a point of sensitivity, she's chubby, not fat. She may be our enemy, but she's also a woman. You should try not to hurt each other's feelings. Uh, anything else? Her thick eyebrows are all the rage with Malakim, so much so that false eyebrows are expected to be the next big thing. Uh, well, if he's that strong without Malak arts, I don't want to see what he's like with them. What were you thinking, Eleanor? Attacking a legate like that? Uh, well... Uh, I just thought Rokuro was going to die if I didn't intervene. Oh? You'd kill one of your own allies for a demon? I... I acted without thinking. Sometimes I'm too soft-hearted to a fault. I'd say it's less that, and more just stupidity. You're supposed to be protecting Lafayette. Don't get yourself into trouble you don't need. Even if one of her own is in danger? Even then. This kid must be really important to her. All right. I understand. Luffy said. Next time she acts up, stop her. Understand? We don't know what she's got up her sleeve. O okay. Thanks for not telling on me, Eleanor. And I'm sorry I hijacked your body. I understand how it feels to want to protect your friends. The problem's with those demons, not you. But I think Velvet has the capacity to feel the same way, too. At least when it comes to her brother. Is that why you're staying with her? I'm... I'm not sure. It's hard to say. I have to figure out what's going on with this group. If I ever hope to wrest the child from them. So we're heading in the right direction, because we had a little, uh, a little dialogue moment. Well, don't wake up on my account. Oh, you guys woke up on my account. I am so sorry. I slept in until like 11 today. I don't, I guess, I, in case you're all were interested when I woke up. I was just kind of thinking out loud, and then I realized, oh, boy, sorry. But, you know, whatever.
Dang, that's a lot of them. I'm not a fan of long, scary things. Um, have you looked in a mirror lately? You really go crazy with all that paper. You think I'm the one that's going crazy? <laughs> I completely forgot about Magalu, honestly. I think I went down this way too, didn't I? Yeah, there's the gems. Stop singing to save you guys <laughs> ears. I can't sing. Deep in the minds of Mordor, a demon crafted a sword. That's what happens when the legendary blacksmith Kurogane toils so hard, he forgets to die. I gave up everything, thinking of nothing else but forging a sword that could surpass Stormhowl. And before I knew it... You had traded your humanity for demonhood. I see I'm not the only one. So great was your grudge against your brother, the inheritor of Stormhowl. Well, guess we're not so different. You don't suppose you could hammer me up a new sword, do you? I've forged countless blades over these long years, yet not one has proven a match for Stormhowl. And yet you still seek a Kurogane sword? I'll put it like this. No matter how much you've failed across the centuries, you've never broken. Well, I'm the same way. If anything can break Shigure and his god blade, it's the bitterness I carry. I Strangely enough, seeing you and your brother has given me an idea that might work. I will forge you a new blade. Should we get some Brightstone? Nope. No need for that. Huh? Should I take it from the top? If you would. My arms are all I'll be needing. What are 
are you doing? Don't be alarmed. I'm just cutting free some raw materials for the sword. You see something new every day. You need his head to make the sword? That's right. With this fine clump of pure resentment, I shall forge your imitation Stormhowl anew. No. I only keep this imitation as a reminder of how weak-willed I was in the past. To defeat Shigure, I've perfected the art of dual wielding, a secret Rangetsu technique. All right. If that's what you prefer, a pair of short swords it is. Wait outside. He's hammering his own head. The ship is on its way, right on schedule. Of course it is. They don't have the Reaper on board. One more thing. Apparently, Shigure is Arturius' bodyguard. So we'll have to face him down sometime, no matter what. It's in our best interest to get rid of him while he's working alone. The problem is, Rokuro can't beat him by himself. Agreed. Shigure is not to be trifled with. Certainly. That's why, when Rokuro creates an opening, we're going to take Shigure out. You want us to meddle in somebody else's private quarrel? If it affects my own quarrel, yes. I suppose I'm in the same position. Besides... I can still use him. There's no sense in throwing his life away. Rokuro's not really a guy to care about the big picture. He might try to hack your limbs off a bit, but he'll get over it. Rokuro, Kurogane, I just do not understand them. You saw them. Demons. We're crazy. Sure. But they go through life with such crystal clear sense of purpose. Even demons have things they're not willing to let go. Or do you think us mere animals? Running around killing people left and right. I know, I know. I understand demons still have a certain consciousness. But I look at those two and they seem passionate. Like normal people. Well, I've yet to meet a human so passionate he'd chop his own head off. Do you have a purpose like they do? I do, in fact. Ever since Artorius used my brother as a sacrifice. Typical demon nonsense. The Abbey exists to protect the people. Yes, sometimes cold, painful decisions need to be made to protect the many. But they never stoop to human sacrifice. Besides, as Shepherd, Artorius will cleanse the world of... If that's what you think, ask the precious Shepherd yourself. Ask him just what he did three years ago. He wouldn't. He'd never... Rokuro wants to slay his brother, even if it kills him. And Kurogane had his own head lopped off just to forge powerful swords. How do those two find it in themselves to go so far? It's just how they are. They're demons. Not exactly normal. Yeah, it's scary. But I also kinda admire it. But me, I don't have anything I'm that desperate to accomplish. Not yet, you mean. In time, you'll find something. You really think so? Almost certainly. But don't feel you have to go and risk your life over it. You're not a demon. And you should stay that way. You deserve a normal life. Okay. But never mind. Just the foolish ramblings of a demon girl. I made the Enfu rush out to the docks to scout the place out. Pretty smart, am I right? I pity that creature sometimes. That Kurogane, though, what a character! Giving his own body to forge a sword, like some kind of ritual sacrifice. Ritual sacrifice? It's certainly something only a demon would do. It was a necessary sacrifice in order to gain power. A necessary sacrifice. What a vicious turn of phrase. Indeed. Still, 
I can't say I'm not thrilled to see how it all turns out. If what you give is mere meat for a god's morbid lunch, could there be a more trivial sacrifice? But if the offering is one's own body and soul, even a single hair can be portentous. I wonder what she will have been in the end. Bad, bad news! A group of Praetors have left the docks and are headed this way! They said they were coming to purge Eleanor the traitor! Purge? Velvet, what do we do? We take them head on. And you're fighting with us, Eleanor. An order, I presume. It is. Protect Lafayette. And defeat the Exorcists. All right. I understand. Just remember, if we lose Eleanor, Lafayette will turn into a demon. I haven't forgotten. But we need to pool all the resources we have. She needs us for her own ends. And we'll use that to our advantage in this fight. Just don't push your luck too far, Velvet. And so recently was she a noble, upstanding young exorcist. How quickly one falls when entering Velvet's dark orbit. Ask me if I care. And I don't know what to do. Should I go out? Maybe go see how this sword thing's going. Zombies got something stuck in your throat. Luckily, it's not me. I got other things to fight right now. Praetor Eleanor, you should be ashamed of yourself, cowering to demons. Your collusion could spell disaster to the Abbey if left unchecked. The only possible atonement is your death. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
You've betrayed the people and sullied Artorius' ideals. No, that's not... <laughs> Velvet, she's testing me. I know I have to fight. My mission calls for it. But any more of this will kill them. Time for you to die and be purged! Eleanor! I can't do it! I can't kill them! I'm not done yet! There. Now we're even, Eleanor. You've got new swords! Sinister. I like it. I take it you're ready. Yeah. All that's left is to kill Shigure. With me as a witness. I... I... Keep on fighting like that, and you'll be killed. And if you get killed, Luffy said we'll lose his vessel. I know that! Velvet, wait! You're not going to kill them? I'm just not that hungry right now. I've got new orders for you. Fight the exorcists, but make sure they don't die. Understood. I guess that was as far as Eleanor could go. I think so. Push her any further and she's bound to break. <laughs> Ever the virtuous exorcist. That very virtue is what lets her be Lafayette's vessel. Besides, I can't help but admire her commitment. She's enduring total disgrace to accomplish her mission. How uncommonly pleasant of you. Pleasant folks don't use people the way we do. Yeah, you've got that right. Ah! Hey, Bien Phil? I was wondering if I could talk to you about something that's on my mind. I figured it was just about the time that you and I had the talk, actually. I've seen it all, heard it all, and even tasted it all in my time as a Moloch. Ask me anything you want. Thanks. I was hoping you could let me borrow those books you were reading earlier, if that's okay. You mean how to talk a human female into becoming your vessel, and how to get the cuties? Hey! Keep it down! Keep it down! But you and Madame Eleanor have already formed a pact! Why do you still need either of those books? Well, it's like when we're alone together, things get so awkward. It's hard to talk with her, you know? <laughs> that happens a lot with Molochim and Vessels who are still new to the whole thing. I've been there. In that case, I've got an even better book for you. Whoa, you read a lot of books. I'm just an avid learner is all. Now let's see. Oh, here we go. Hot Spring Topics, bearing your body and your soul. Being upfront and honest is always the best policy. I... I don't think we'll be bathing in any hot springs together. Do you have anything else? All right, then how about... After bath party games, dropping your defenses and your towels. Why do you keep trying to get us naked? I think that would just make things even more awkward. Picky, picky. Tell you what, you can just look at my collection and pick whatever sounds good. Love hacking. Living long and loving hard. Diary of a diary thief. Hands speak louder than words. All classics. I remember reading them when Miss Mogilu and I were struggling to get along. Oh, to be young again. You ever think maybe things would have been easier if you never read these books? Reading the mood. Knowing what to say and how to say it. That one's a winner. A must read for sure. Are you two reading something together? We are! We are! 
Luffy said's been worried about that awkward distance between you two, and he came to me for some advice. I've heard his side of the story, so let's you and I grab some tea and talk about what to do about it. Come on! Let's go, let's go! Oh, okay. Knowing what to say and how to say it. I don't think this will help either. That got awkward. Pretty weird, too. And now I think I lost my direction. That was red earlier. At least I think it was red earlier. Maybe it wasn't. I might have gone the wrong way, of course. Hey, you go away. You go away. You go away. Thank you. There's a new door. Angel Halo. Should have gone that way. Hey, Rokuro. Why did he call your storm howl a reject? Well, you see, when blacksmiths make swords, they don't just make one at a time. They make a whole bunch. The best one of them all is the one that gets presented to the swords commissioner, while the rest are tossed aside. Huh. I didn't realize the standards were so high. The head of my clan gets the real Storm Howl, and his siblings get the remainders. So one is real, and the others are imitations? I guess so. Shigure has the real one, and... Yeah, guess that makes mine an imitation. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply... Don't apologize. You got me to finally realize something. It might just be why I'm so hung up on beating him. Oh. And to Velvet? Which Luffy said is real, and which is the imitation? Oh, what are you saying? She means my name. It's the same as Velvet's brothers. Huh? The one who went and got sacrificed by Artorias. Surely you are mistaken. Our shepherd would never do such a thing. But what else could make Velvet hate Artorias so much? I... I don't... So you have a truth, and Velvet has a truth. Now, which is the real one, and which is the imitation? Uh, uh. Yeah, that's what I get so hung up about. Is that really Lafayette, or is that just a Malik that looks like him? And then Velvet just can't refuse the truth that her brother is gone forever. And so she makes stuff up in her head. And so is Laffy. Oh, that's just a circle. So that's that's what I want to know. Is Laffy the real Laffy, or is it just a Malik? Just some of the questions I wanna I wanna get answered.
allá. game is kind of linear, though, huh? Like, you're just going down lots of hallways. But at the same time, it's a long game. You and Shigure both use the Rangetsu style. But to me, it looked like you both fight completely differently. Why is that? Our school encompasses two distinct forms. To the outside world, we're known for fighting with a single great sword. But we also study dual short swords should need arise. So, Shigure uses the great sword, and you use the short. In most schools, wouldn't the secondary technique be used primarily in support of the first? That's true for us as well. We learn the dual short swords to provide sparring partners for those studying the great sword. Then why would you handicap yourself against Lord Shigure? He's no mere swordsman. As I'm painfully aware, Shigure is a true master. We trained together since we were small children. I was his sparring partner for ten years. <sighs> his skill with the great sword is godlike. So, in order to beat him, I took up the short blades. To our school, it might be secondary, but it's what I know best. You're badly disadvantaged in reach. If I eliminate my fear, I have a chance. If I can control the terror of being split in half, and I can step inside his guard, he'll have two times the trouble. Eliminating fear, huh? A style for someone who's lost his humanity. Right? It's like you two brothers are the very swords you carry. Huh? Storm Howl, a godlike sword known to all as the strongest there ever was. Storm Quell, burdened by the ceaseless struggle to best the other. One, an exorcist who walks in the light. One, a demon moving through the shadows. The only thing these two polar opposites want is to cut down the other. Precisely! Both are renowned blades. But I don't see what exorcists and demons have to do with it. Oh, man, I went the wrong way. Wait, no, I didn't. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I don't know where's the right way anymore. Gosh darn it. Wrong way. Ah! It, it's looking at me. Ah, it's looking at me. It's looking at me. It's looking at me. Run, 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 run. It's gonna eat me. Not this way. Oh. Over here? What was it over here? Was it that way? No, that's where I came from. I think. Oh, okay. I think. I might have gone the wrong way. Next episode, I'll get back on track, and then... Yep. Artifact out.